We want to thank all of our patrons. Y'all are the best. Hello friends. So a little bit of background first about the next uh, several videos I'm going to be uploading for you guys. Um, this uh, set of videos is going to be me building out uh, and designing my new nav station. I started this project, originally started working on it in January of 2018. So I went through many different designs. I ended up building three different switch panels over the course of a year. Um, the first one uh, just didn't work out. There were like a number of factors that played into it. And uh, I changed the design of my chart table. Um, originally I thought I was gonna have a sliding drawer. I ended up going with a, um, like a lifting, kind of traditional lifting chart table. So in the process of designing that and building out that whole thing, it changed what was possible um, uh, for my switch panel. So I made the first one in March of 2018. I bought the first series of like blue C switches and everything in January of 2018. Um, and then slowly over the course of the year, bought all my instruments. Um, I don't like to buy things on credit cards, if at all possible. I use credit cards for emergencies, but um, I don't want to have any uh, debt so that when I take off cruising, I just have to worry about my regular expenses. So I buy things when I have money, and um, I work full-time, so kind of like every other paycheck, I um, buy some stuff for the boat that I can that's within my budget. So this stuff's really expensive. Um, and uh, at the end of all this video, when the whole nav station installed, we're going to go through every single piece. I'm going to talk about all of the instruments in the new nav station, and I'm going to do something I don't, I haven't done in the past, where I'm going to go through and talk about the cost of each individual piece. With this process, it's easy for me to kind of go back and lot, lay everything out because I ordered a lot of stuff on Amazon, some stuff on eBay. So I have records of all the, you know, at least the instrument costs. So we're going to go over that and uh, see how painful that bill is. But when it's spread out over the course of a year, it's not nearly, not nearly as gnarly. Like I said, I made my first switch panel in March of 2018. And um, then jumped forward a year. Um, did a lot of stuff throughout the year. Like I said, I collected all the instruments and stuff. I built my new chart table, did other projects on the boat. And uh, we come to January of 2019, which is this year. And um, that's when I was like, okay, time to get, get to it. So I made my second switch panel um, in uh, like early January of 2019. And I ended up messing it up, which I actually worked out great for me. Uh, I cut something off center and um, I couldn't, couldn't live with it. So, uh, but actually the redesign uh, through a lot of research and and different things I decided to try out, the redesign helped me enormously. So my final product is like light years better than the original one I built, the first one I built or the second one I built. Um, and I learned a lot along the way. Um, so I'm really happy with the way the final product came out and you guys will get to see that through this process. But this first video is um, me, uh, preparing the aft panel and cutting it out and everything. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna go ahead and include this first little clip is when I initially made the templates and started this whole process. And then we'll jump ahead into the future to where we're actually building out the final switch panels. So this is my temporary nav station I made uh, before my big trip on the holiday, during the holidays. Um, but now it's time to make my build out my new uh, real nav station and um, I'm upgrading the entire electronics, the switchboard, everything, moving everything um, to the port side. I uh, cut out cardboard as templates for where I want my uh, where I want to put my my um, switch panel 
and for all the instruments is you're going to go in the back. So I'll be closing this in. Something like that. I bought um, really high quality, beautiful Blue C systems switch panels. So this is my DC switch panel. I've got it all set up. That's gonna go right there. I have a separate, oh, that's that. I have a separate one uh, just for my navigation lights. So that's my running lights, my steaming light, and my anchor light. Um, and that one will go closer here. And I made that separate. So if I'm, if I'm up in the cockpit and I need to send someone down that's not familiar with everything, It'll be easy to tell them, you know, it's just a switch with three, turn on the running lights or the steaming light or whatnot. Um, and then my AC power uh, is going to go here somewhere. I got a new shore plug that I'm putting in. I'm moving the location that where it's at now. It's low in the cockpit and right by the cockpit drain. And if you got pooped with a wave, it would be underwater. So it's, it's a completely insane spot to have it. So I moved it up higher. Um, and it's going to be on the same bulkhead, but higher and to the port side. And then, so this will be here, the shore power, and then I'll put a dedicated, uh, like, um, 120 plug beneath it that only works on shore power. So that'll be nice, you know, right here, keep everything contained right here at the nav station. Um, eventually I'm going to build out cabinetry that goes all the way up, covering the back of my compass and my depth sounder. And, um, and that'll act as a surface for my iPad that I'll be using for my chart plotter to swing out. I'll put a RAM mount and that'll swing out in the door of the cockpit while I'm underway. First things first, gotta take it one step at a time. I'm doing my the desktop tomorrow and I'm cutting all the wood for the uh, back wall uh, or bulkhead nav door. And um, then this, this side with the switch panels. Um, and that'll be on a piano hinge. So it'll be able to lay down, I'll be able to access it, all the wiring. And uh, this as well will be on a piano hinge so it can swing out and I can get to everything. And I I'm gonna put in a repeater, depth, wind, speed, everything, uh, instrument readout so that I can easily see everything that's repeated from the uh, instruments in the cockpit. And um, then my weather station will be here and my VHF radio. I want to get an ICOM that has like a uh, GPS um, that'll work with my GPS antenna and stuff. So um, yeah, this gives me a lot of room to upgrade my instruments. Even though I plan on keeping this boat very minimal as far as electronics goes, there's things that, you know, obviously I need. That's a big project. Been dreading it. So just trying to do it right. Uh, I want to do it once. So now to take my templates and um, I'll cut all the wood at home. So time to get to work. So I cut out all my elements I need. I have my bottom, which is three quarter inch. And uh, my face panel, Baltic birch, that will get um, the, uh, all the holes will get cut out for the instruments. And then I took my teak and I cut rails in it. It would have been a lot easier with like a dado blade, but I just did several passes. So this will set like that. And it'll be framed out in teak, the whole door. Um, so now it's, uh, I'm gonna trace where this goes and then lay out where I want my instruments to go and cut those out with a jigsaw. Um, and then I can get these cut mitered corners uh, so it's like all framed out and see how it looks. And if that works, then I can move on to laminating the Baltic birch. And then after that dries, I can come back with a uh, trim router and take care of all the, uh, the holes and get it all, all finished up. So making good progress. Uh, now it's time to get this layout done. You, you know, it's like I played with a thousand different variations on where I wanted stuff. So we'll see what the final one ends up being. Um, so, uh, time to cut out the templates. So I have my template for my VHF radio. Um, mine is an ICOM 424 or something like that. This is the, uh, printed out template from the, um, 
I got it online. I forgot to print out a template for my Raymarine graphic display. Um, so I'm just using the gasket. Just drew it on a piece of paper. Drew the holes as well. And uh, instead of trying to like measure and find the center, I'm just gonna fold this over on itself. And then those, those creases will be my center. Time to cut this out. I would suggest printing out a bunch of these in case you mess them up. And the other thing to think about is that you want to cut out the inside, not the outside. Um, I'm just using an Ulfa blade. So that's what's going to get us started. And then where these go will kind of determine where some of the other stuff goes. I have like a, uh, a radio stereo I'm putting in and uh, some power outlets and then my iPad will be mounted with a RAM mount on the back between this and this element. So let's get to tracing that on. Now the spacing game happens. So I know I want my VHF like right here. So that this can go out into the cockpit until I get my command mic add-on. So that's going to go there. And then I think the mic will hang below it, like there. Somewhere. Maybe I'll do it down there and then that up there. And then my Raymarine is going to go there. My iPad has to fit in the middle there. Down here might be good so that the cord doesn't obstruct this whole spot. Then I can have something else up here. Maybe the battery monitor eventually. Bring me in there and then I got my stereo Bluetooth JBL. I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to put some power plugs in down here and uh, a couple other things but this is the main layout I believe that this is it so there this goes here with our mount of our mic up here save that for our battery monitor and then we'll have our iPad here which is on a RAM mount and that'll be like, you can swivel it and take it out and take it into the cockpit real easy. So I think that's it. So now we'll just start measuring equal distances, figuring out these two, go onto this and uh, cut them out. Decided I'm going to go ahead and put it up top. Um, I was worried about the where the mic cable comes out. This is going to be hinged, folding down. I was worried about that hitting the chart table. So up here it's safe. I might put the uh, the mic like a, attachment clasp on the side of this, but this will give me more options. I think and it'll be safer. I've measured down an inch and measured over an inch. I'm just going to tape this down. Again, this template for the ICOM 424 VHF, um, you can get it off of their website, which is nice. And you can get the Ray Marine ones in the manual. Um, strangely, that JPL brand new stereo I got, there's like no templates online. I mean, I know it's just a simple circle and you measure it, but it's a little strange that they didn't uh, provide, even like the whole measurements is a little strange. Um, but we'll, we'll manage. I think I can get the gasket off so I can get the exact size. All right, so here's our VHF. 
That's where we're going to cut that out. Go ahead and measure over. An inch from our, this is our teak line where our teak frame out goes. Our outside edge to be like that. I'm gonna go ahead and just trace this for fun. Even though it's not lined up right. We can go ahead and just do this. And this is pretty loosey goosey because uh, it's inside, so I'm not I'm not even gonna have to really weather seal it. So um, if I need to make small adjustments, it's uh, pretty easy. So there's our first two holes. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. That way I can set my Raymarine in and then I can figure out exactly where I want my JPL. It's just going to be, you know, halfway between here and here. But I want the true bottom so that I get it exactly centered. And uh, after I go to the boat next, there's um, my bilge pump switch is going to be here. But I have to get the measurements on it. I don't have it with me. Um, so, yeah, time to cut these two out. So I cut this paddle bed hole so I can get my jigsaw in to cut out this hole. So there's that. Looks good. All right, let's lay in all the uh, instruments that we have cut out. Um, see how she looks. Oh man, that's cool.
she is. Pretty cool. This mount is rad. Oh, so I'm gonna have it this way. This mount is cool. There's like the attachment comes, it's coming in the mail tomorrow, but it goes there. And you'll just push this in, the springs in. So you can take it out and take it to the cockpit. Get all that done. I can go ahead and throw in my uh, holes for my USB charging. And I think I'm going to do two or three down here. So, great success today. Very stoked. So, I got the new switch panel all cut out. Here it is. With everything laid in it. Um, now that there's only a couple more holes to drill, um, and then I can laminate this with Formica, and uh, then it'll be ready to go. I have teak that's gonna frame out the whole door, and then I'll build the rest of the uh, structure that goes behind it. Um, but I'm happy with the progress today. Got the JBL new stereo, my uh, graphic ST60 Plus graphic display, my iPad will be here, and my new ICOM uh, VHF will be there. Eventually, this will be like a battery monitor, but I can't afford it right now. Um, so, stoked the progress today. Getting a candy star right now, about to cut out the uh, switch panel. Hopefully, uh, it all goes perfectly and looks beautiful. Got all the Formica trimmed off. Now it's time to peel the uh, contact paper off that was put on so it wouldn't scratch the surface while I was trimming it. See how she looks. Looks great. Stoked. I'm going to lay all the instruments in now and check it out. There it is all laminated up with uh, most of the stuff in. Down here and there is going to be the build pump switch and then more auxiliary stuff here and here. Uh, USB ports. And uh, it'll be framed in teak, and that's the aft nav panel. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Thanks again to all of our patrons. Your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time. <laughs>